Crocheting 101, how to crochet for complete beginners. Brought to you by Club Crochet and produced by Louise Loops. That's me. Joining in the round. So I left this out of chapter four where we learned about increasing and working in the round versus flat because it's kind of a meld between the two. And while it's definitely a great technique, I surprisingly don't actually find myself using it very often. But that's probably because it's not really used too often in amigurumi. The one major con to this technique is that it leaves a pretty visible seam along where you're joining, which is why I usually just work in the round rather than join in the round when I'm making beanies or amigurumi. It is a great technique though and used a lot in motifs and things like granny squares. Here's how it's done. Usually you'll be making these into a ring of chain stitches. So to start, let's chain six. And connect the chains with a slip stitch to make a ring. Now we'll be working into the center hole here. We're going to make a ring of double crochet stitches instead of single crochets. So before we start our round of double crochets, we want to chain three. Now work our double crochet stitches into the center of the ring. Sometimes they'll be worked into the chains depending on the pattern. We're going to make 12 double crochet stitches into the ring. When we get to the end, we want to connect the stitch we just made with the first stitch, the chain three, to finish the round. You do this by making a slip stitch into the last of the three chains you made before round one. Now we just continue on. Depending on the pattern, you might have to turn here, which is why I say it's kind of like a meld between working in the round and working flat. Though a lot of patterns just have you continue on without turning. We're not gonna be turning. The main difference between joining in the round and simply working in the round is that you'll have to do that first chain before continuing, like you do when you're working in the flat. For example, here, since we're working with double crochet stitches, we'll chain three before continuing. Now you can continue on, putting the rest of your stitches into the two loops, like normal. For this round, we're doing an increase into each stitch around. There should be 24 stitches by the end. When you get to the end and have 24 stitches, not including our first chain three, you want to skip our connecting slip stitch here and instead join the ends by making a slip stitch into the top chain like we did before. And that's how you join in the round for crocheting. Continue using this method chaining before each round and when you get to a size you want, simply cut and pull through at the end to make a final knot, which you can then sew into the piece to hide it or use it to sew pieces together. If you want to continue and make it bigger, here's what would be the next few rounds. For round three, you double crochet one and then increase, repeating that 12 times total and ending up at 36 stitches. For round four, you would double crochet two and then increase, repeating 12 times total, and ending up at 48 stitches. And for round five, you will double crochet three and then increase, repeating that 12 times, ending up at 60 stitches total. You might kind of see a pattern here. Hey there, thanks for watching. If you like this video, let me know by liking the video down below and following Louis Loops on any social media and click the link on the screen now or down below to go to the next video. Pasta la pizza and happy hooking.